Every Pony. This is Silver Eagle with Ponyville Live. I'm joined by a very special guest today here at BabsCon in San Francisco. This is Mr. Jason Thiessen, the Supervising Director for My Little Pony. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about your role in the production, just uh, the big picture of the My Little Pony creative process? Um, well, this it's a lot to talk about. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, Let's see, like, well, once we um, start with, uh, you know, the, like, we do a bit of a, a talk with Hasbro about the upcoming season, mm -hmm. and we get, like, a, a lot of uh, info with, with the, the executive team mm -hmm. and Megan, and, and, and uh, we talk about what our goals are for that. Sure, so big um, picture strategy. Big picture sure. strategy, we're mm -hmm. all involved with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's things with the brand that they want right. to see. Sure and the hub and you know we all get our, our ducks in a row um and then we start you know planning the future uh so then you know megan and her team would go off and uh, start doing their thing and then we kind of wait for the premises to come in and wait for their writing to come in sure um and uh you know jim and i will you know both make notes mm -hmm. from what we see uh from our end um with the with the was that a cat? No. <laughs> it sounded like a cat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there really oh. is. A, oh, that is an adorable. Sorry. That, <laughs> Derailed that's the actually totally like adorable. <laughs> okay. So, sorry. Anyway. Um, anyway. Yeah. So, so we we'll make some uh, some suggestions on on this on the scripts, mm -hmm. things that uh, we see going forward that we're gonna want to do, mm -hmm. um, and then when those scripts are locked, then we oversee the the next phases like mm -hmm. uh, design. Um, and voice records. We'll mm -hmm. go down and and uh, help with the directing the voice the voices, mm -hmm. um, and then you just all the way through. Then we go to storyboard, mm -hmm. and um, we will you know give off uh, our ideas for what the storyboard artist should do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it just keeps going. Like I, sure. <laughs> I don't want to ramble too much, but it's so, basically every phase all the way through from you know kind of scripts to design to voice to uh storyboard animation to finish product to finish product you know music sound effects uh editing all of it we are kind of the stewards that sort of oversee all those aspects that and is that is excellent yeah wow, it's it's a lot to, that sounds to keep like in a, the head a, a high pressure but very high reward yeah. i imagine in this well case. it's a very rigid schedule and a very mm -hmm. fast schedule sure um sure. so they there's not a lot of room for error right <laughs> you know? right yeah there's no uh i mean we we can make changes and fixes along the mm -hmm. way but you mm -hmm. know we try to really think ahead so that we don't come to a, con a, a situation where uh, someone hands something in, like a storyboard, or we get to an edit, and we're just like, "This isn't working," you know. Mm -hmm. like, and it needs a complete rewrite. But we don't have time, like so yeah, we no got to keep for moving forward. But mm -hmm. you know, luckily we haven't had any you know major disasters or anything. <laughs> um, knock on wood. Knock on wood, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but you know, but we 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 prevent those by really thinking ahead, mm -hmm. and uh, you know trying to think out all the problems we might get, you know, experience right. makes, you know, yeah, has a exactly. lot to do with that. Right. So um, after four seasons now, and Getting I very hope, comfortable with I that hope process. we can, yeah, right. make sure we uh, don't get into those problems. Sure. Sure, absolutely. So, so uh, you mentioned Megan McCarthy's role, mm -hmm. uh, and and you both are credited as executive producers, right? And, and is that sort of for different halves of the production process? Is that because you said Megan's team handles the writing yeah. process, and so giving you the premise upon which you build the show? Yeah, well, the all the, the not just the premise, but you know, like the the whole the whole season and the whole uh, mm -hmm. all the you know dialogue and, and visual and ideas and stuff and like that yeah sure. and then we will take those and expand on them mm -hmm. um but like with us you know we're both on uh my little pony friendship is magic and also equestria girls right right so we're kind of bridging those two properties now mm -hmm. and uh so it's like it's just you know we're, we're becoming a fleet now <laughs> pretty soon <laughs> if we have any more you know spin-offs mm -hmm. like it's uh, I won't be um, expecting an admiral uh, you know, sort of upgrade just another kidding. promotion up yeah, yeah. executive producer yeah. rear admiral admiral yeah yeah I sure. want the hat no. the, yeah the little shoulder thing the yeah. on the shoulder yeah it's fine absolutely uh, so <laughs> um, in in your 
process, uh, you you mentioned you you've sort of become a bit of a well-oiled machine. I hope so. Point. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I four think seasons. Pretty good. Yeah. And and uh, you know this is another thing that you know we've started to notice in the audience is that you, you've taken this opportunity now that you're more comfortable with the basic premise of the show. It, it sticks out now that attention to detail is becoming more and more mm -hmm. of a priority. Mm -hmm. We notice in season four, for example, that lighting and shadows are now mm -hmm. starting to pick up, and we're starting to see even more. And it, not even it, it's not even that the original show wasn't awesome enough mm -hmm. right you know we, we would have been perfectly satisfied with that uh, we could do 10 seasons of that and we'd be completely happy but to see it take all these steps forward is even just icing on the cake are so. you are you saying we're doing more than we need to? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I actually would say you're going the extra mile oh, okay. on the last no, I, the last few seasons. I think that's very fair oh, to say. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I I really like you know being able to always refine and mm -hmm. perfect. Um, you know, with each season we sort of get a little better and a little more efficient mm -hmm. with our process. And we have more to fall back on, and, and you know sure. we can utilize the, the some reuse here and there. Sure. Right. Um, and as our world gets bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. um, then yeah, we have more room to to add things like, hey, let you know what would be nice is some real cinematic lighting here, right. and right. and you know what we got time to do that now because mm -hmm. we've been more efficient with other stuff. Because before in the first season. Um, a lot of it was just like trying to keep up with the schedule, you right, know, like, I don't right. know if we can do this, we just got to keep going. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it just, it's like, with, it's like that with every property, like the first season of any show. Sure. You're just kind of trying to work it out. How does this work? Well, mm -hmm. you're, you're developing the rules. So that's what you're focused on. Right. And then the following seasons, you know, you get, okay, that's all established. Now, what can we do to make this just better? Yep. And it's always, every mm -hmm. season is try to be better, better, better. Right. Both with like writing and animation and posing and mm -hmm. model or, you know, all these things. We're always refining. And um, yeah, hope, I'm glad to, to hear that it's actually paying off, you know. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think that's the mark of a good show with, with uh, staying power. Yeah. Right. Is its adaptability. You know, right. it's its ability to continue to create the feeling in the viewer that it's fresh. Yeah. You know, it's something they've never seen before. Oh. Um, yeah. and, and avoiding that sort of, you know, just reruns. The, you know, the, har the hardest, reruns. yeah, the hardest part would be like trying to top yourself all the time, right. you know. Yeah, and I can imagine that that gets very difficult just yeah. trying to come up with something that hasn't been an existing premise, you know, becomes harder and harder the more seasons yeah. you pile on. Like you, you do an episode that's like you put a lot of work into it. It's really super cool and mm -hmm. you do some stuff you've never done before and it's amazing and then what happens in the next episode it's like uh, we can't <laughs> match and you know exceed that every time mm -hmm. so uh it becomes like a, a sort of like a, a process of like well we we want to go far enough but then you know try not to go so far we can never go there again right you know Right, and then something maybe if would be we, so hard to top. Yeah, or if we right. if we do something we really can't top, then maybe we go a different route, and mm -hmm. we'll try. You know, we'll top it in a different aspect, mm -hmm. um, and not just just not the same aspect. Sure, you know, sure. Um, just to keep it fresh and mm -hmm. and, and new and um, interesting. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to just do the same thing over and over. Again. Sure, right. Yeah. So in, in your process, and this is just me being a little bit of a nerd uh, involved in your process. <laughs> Aren't we now, all? Right. We all have a little bit of it in us, right? Uh, what would you say is your most exciting innovation that you've had a chance to make in the show's production since hmm. it started? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I mean, I, I really like how our kind of modeling and layout process has, mm -hmm. has developed. I think we've gotten much, much better at that. And uh, I look at our, like the build team who are like doing the, the flash models and right. we're always kind of refining that. And like where we started from was such a good place. Like Woody spent months on like just one pony model, right. trying to like <laughs> find all of the little issues and like figure out what, how are we gonna animate this? Mm -hmm. Not just in one scene, but then in all of the scenes. Mm -hmm. At every all different of the angle. Episodes. Yeah. Right. And, mm -hmm. Man, he did such a good job, and like because of all that that care and attention put in at the beginning, mm -hmm. it has opened up so many doors. Right. And now we right. have like we we don't tell our board artists to to be too limited in the in their angles because right. we, we know we can do it. Mm -hmm. It's just a mm -hmm. matter of like, is it worth it for the story? Is right. do we want to tell 
the story from this angle, or is it just kind of like being opulent for no reason? Sure. Um, sure. But we have that freedom. Like we could. It just would be a matter of you know, is it worth it? Sure. Um, so yeah, that's one aspect I, I'm really happy about. Mm -hmm. And then by also having all our layout artists like really in house and putting a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. into the show, um, that has made a huge difference. Like I can definitely tell in season four that the layout process has, you know, definitely improved. And we got some really talented artists and, mm -hmm. and posers um, putting a lot of time and energy into it and, and really following the board like where, where we have board artists like putting, you know, care and attention into mm -hmm. our poses. Um, they follow that. Right. And, you know, we have board artists watching the show and it's like, that's, that's my pose. That's my drawing, <laughs> you know? And in a lot of flash shows, they don't quite always do that because they're, you know, being efficient. Sure. And, uh, and just sort of going with like, well, here's our stock our stock. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's a place for that. And, you know, it depends on your budget and your right. timeline right. and, and the kind of show it that you might have. Mm -hmm. Um, but on our show, we, we have the freedom to do that. And, right. uh, and, every, and the people who are working on the show really care. Mm -hmm. um, and then that gives the animators the, the freedom to add even more to it. Because right. then they add like subtle nuances, like little little head tilts and, mm -hmm. and acting and hair bobs and, and extra eye movements and little mm -hmm. subtle nuances that you don't get from a lot of, certainly not from a lot of flash shows. Right. And TV, right. you know, it's hard to, to include all those little extra features. So... Yeah. I'm really proud of where we've gotten to in those aspects. We're just getting more and more cinematic and full right. as we go along and, you know, vivid. And so it's, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, you know, it, we, could, we can only go further from there and right. hopefully we can improve it even more in, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and I'll, uh, you mentioned that freedom to sort of take the creativity and the expression where you want it to go mm -hmm. in the show. And, and you particularly are kind of credited with some of the, the most uh, out of the box thinking, <laughs> yeah. I would say. Uh, and, and in particular, sort of how you portrayed, I, this is back to even season two. Right. Uh, I believe that you were the one who, who, who sort of executed the felt check mark. Yeah. Pinky's brain is made of felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying like all of her thoughts, uh, and didn't the, the were you also involved in this season's uh, gummy is a real life alligator? Uh, yeah, yeah, that and was a real me. life rubber chicken. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> See, and it's those little departures that yeah. are just the, they they stick out. They the do, they as, do. As really, really entertaining. They're a little risky. I I, sure. I I try not to, you know, I always like to find places where we can kind of break the box a little bit, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it has to be in the right time and place. Right. And if it's, if it's not asking for it, then we mm -hmm. don't do it. We don't want to force anything in. Right. So like inside Pinky's brain, it was just sort of like an obvious choice. Like, oh, well, how does she think this is Pinky's mind? Let's do something different, you know? And so- Pinky's uh, probably the perfect vector for- any Yeah, kind like of nobody totally else- Totally unique. No other pony would have been, you know, appropriate for that, but only she. And that's what I like about her character uh, is that we can do things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then I just had like the energy to <laughs> to <laughs> execute it where it's like, oh, I think, I think we could do this. Like, could I actually do this? And then I talked to my wife, and then she's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, let's do it together. We could do it this weekend." Like, okay, sure. It's just a family project. Just, yeah, then. just jump at it, and oh, then awesome. next thing you know, it is done. And then we're sending it to Hasbro, and they're just like, "What?" And it and it ends up being just this, yeah. This excellent it's always a risk. Show. I always like to have a backup plan, so I'll, just in case. Yeah. yeah, like actually, you know, little known fact, there is an actual animated version of the of um, the uh, boneless dance, really fully animated and. I'm, uh, just in case you had to switch it out. Just in case I had to switch it out. In huh. case Hasbro went, uh, let's let's not do that. <laughs> or if I just simply couldn't get the mm -hmm. footage I wanted. Right. But, right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I I I feel a little bad for the animator who did that scene. It's really well animated. I have to sure. say, whoever animated, I don't know who, but they did a great. You did a great job. <laughs> it looked really really good. Um, and uh, but uh, I wanted to do the balloon. Uh, mm -hmm puppet so uh it's out there 
Sure. It's in our archives somewhere. <laughs> oh boy, I can only imagine what else is in there. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, just waiting to be discovered. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, well, well, thank you, Jason, uh, yeah, for all the work you. that you do uh, with the community uh, and and coming to these conventions and also just oh, being so, so involved fun. in the creative process. So yeah, thanks for having me. We're we're very appreciative of all the work and of the show in general. So oh, thank you very much. All right. So with uh, Ponyville Live, this is Silver Eagle, and uh, we're here at BabsCon with Jason Teasing.